Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a little uh, lecture here, PowerPoint slides, and we're going to go through Newton's second law and Newton's third law. So we've covered Newton's second law uh, a little bit, but we're going to do a bit of review to make sure that it, we're good with everything, and then we're going to move on to Newton's third law. So Newton's second law. In words, the easiest way to state it is that the sum of the forces acting on an object is directly proportional to the acceleration experienced by the object and the mass of the object. So that's kind of a mouthful, but what it means is when we apply a force to some object, a net force is going, is going to cause an acceleration. So if we're going to write that, we would go with uh, sigma. So that's our, that stands for the sum of the forces, F. And we're going to throw a little uh, vector symbol over our F here. That means that a force is a vector. Uh, it's a applied in a particular direction. And we're going to talk about what that means in uh, just a second. It's equal to the mass, uh, which we know we're going to define in kilograms, is how much stuff you have of something, times no, the acceleration. And again, with acceleration, we're going to throw a vector on there because acceleration also it is important to distinguish which direction you're moving in. So sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. That's how we would write it in mathematical symbols. So let's do a quick little project, uh, sorry, not project, problem here. A five kilogram cart is acted upon by five Newton force in the positive X direction. What is the acceleration of the cart? So when we're talking about things that are vector quantities, like forces and accelerations, it's important to define what we mean by the positive x direction. Okay, so typically what we're going to work in is the normal, the standard Cartesian plane. So we know it as the xy plane. Here's positive x and here's positive y. So we've been, we're used to working in this plane. Uh, so this is going to be the standard from for pretty much now on. So a five kilogram cart is acted upon by a five Newton force. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw, first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify what are we going to be using? What's our principle? So we know that there's a force, we know that there's a mass and there's an acceleration. So we're going to choose our principle as Newton's second law. This is going to become important when we start dealing with different types of problems. Are we going to use energy? Are we going to use momentum? Are we going to use forces? In this case, we're going to use forces. So we'll draw our free body diagram, which is simply a diagram of all of the forces acting on an object. So here's our object. We're drawing it as a point-like mass, and there's a 5 Newton force in the positive x direction. So we're going to designate that as simply an arrow. And we're going to label it. So this is a force, big F, uh, being applied on, we're going to call it cart C. Okay? So force on cart C. And when we use some of the forces, mass times acceleration, our only force is this FC in the positive X direction. And that's a 5 Newton force. It's equal to 5 kilograms times the acceleration, divide by five, divide by five. Our answer acceleration is one meter per second squared. And we're gonna make sure that we have those little vector symbols there, okay? So that's our answer, very straightforward math. So free body diagrams, uh, it's important to practice these because uh, it's very useful to make sure we know how to label all the forces and account for all of the forces that are happening on an object. So a 500 kilo truck accelerating at 5 meters per second squared, experiencing 600 newtons of air resistance. So why don't you pause this video quickly, try it on your own on a piece of paper, and then resume and we'll walk through it. Okay, I'm gonna assume that you've paused and come back. So let's walk through it. So we're gonna start with, we choose our principle. 
we know that Newton's second law, the sum of the forces, oh, if, no, no, is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And we're going to use our free body diagram. And for our free body diagram, again, we're going to make this truck a point like mass so we can see what's happening to it. So 500 kilo truck, we know that if something is acting in the world around us, uh, that it's going to be experiencing gravity. That's one thing that we definitely know. So gravity acts perfectly in the negative y direction, if that's how we're defining our plane. Again, this is our plane, x, y. And this we're going to call this as a force. And we're going to say this little g stands for force of gravity. And we're going to say it's the Earth acting on the truck. And this is how I like to define my forces. Force of gravity from the Earth on the truck. Okay. So what's next? We know that there is 600 newtons of air resistance. So we know that if we're accelerating at 5 meters per second squared, because it is a positive number, we know that we're accelerating in the positive x direction. Okay, so that means 600 newtons of air resistance. Air resistance always works opposite to the direction of motion. So that 600 newtons is going in this direction. That is a force of air resistance from air on the truck. Okay, so we got those two forces. What else do we know? We know that the truck is on the ground, all right? So when we're driving, we're here on the ground, we have our poorly drawn truck. And it is touching the ground. And when two surfaces come into contact with each other, there's what's called a normal force. And a normal force is a force from the ground or from one surface on the other surface and the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface that is that it's touching so the ground therefore is exerting a normal force upwards onto the truck and that's what keeps the truck on the ground it's the force that you feel from the ground pushing up on you otherwise gravity would pull us straight down when there's if you're standing on a trap door and all of a sudden the trap door falls open there's no normal force pushing upwards and so you fall down because of gravity. So our normal force is going to be going upwards. I'm going to denote that force normal. And we're going to call it the ground on the truck. Okay, so this is pretty good. Uh, we know that we have air resistance. We know we have a normal force and we have a gravity. But we also know that we are accelerating at 5 meters per second squared in the positive direction. So if we look at our Newton's second law, sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration, we see these vector symbols, and these vector symbols are very important. So those vector symbols tell us that if the acceleration is moving in the positive x direction, the sum of the forces also needs to be in the positive x direction. So if we look at all of our forces and we see that there is a force in the negative x direction, if that was the only force, we would know that the object is accelerating in the negative x direction. And since we know that's not true, we know there has to be another force that is causing that acceleration. So we're going to go right here, and we're going to call this a force applied. And we're going to hold off on what exactly is acting on what. We'll get there in a second when we talk about Newton's third law. Uh, so all we know is that there is a force applied. However, we can actually figure out what the value of that is. So let's start with this. We're saying the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Great. What does that mean realistically? Okay. So we're going to sum our forces. This sum right here is very important. So that means we're gonna add all of our forces together. So first of all, we know that there is some force applied. 
And we're going to leave that positive right here because we know it's in the positive x direction. Now, here's something important. When we look at our air resistance force, we see that it's moving in the negative x direction. And what this means when we're doing our math is we're going to say it's negative force of air resistance, okay, equals our mass, 500 kilos, times our acceleration, and that is going to be a positive 5 meters per second squared. So let's move on from this. Now we can throw some more numbers in. We see that our, our force applied minus 600 newtons is equal to 500 times 5, 2,500 newtons. And then we see to balance out this equation, plus 600 plus 600, our force applied is 3,100 newtons. And notice that this is a positive number. This is a positive 3,100 newtons. So we were right that it is indeed in the positive x direction. Our math works out. Moving on from there, we're going to start with a little thought experiment here. We're going to say, we need free body diagrams for a five kilo box sitting on top of a 10 kilo box at rest on a table. So let me just draw this quickly for you. We're gonna say, here's our table. Oh. Here's our table. Again, very wiggly line. Here's our 10 kilo box. Here's our five kilo box. I'm going to call this box one, and we're going to call this box two. So I'm going to give you a second, pause the video, go ahead and try this on your own. When you think you have a decent answer or you get stuck, resume the video and we'll talk about it. All right, I will assume that you have done this. So let's talk about it. Let's start with the five kilo box. We're going to start with box one. So if we're going to draw a free body diagram, we're going to start with our point-like object. And so one thing we know for sure is that we have gravity. It's a force of gravity, Earth, acting on box one. And now we know that it's at rest. So at rest, meaning that if we go back to Newton's, oop, that's terrible. Go back to Newton's second, sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. At rest means this is zero. Therefore, the sum of our forces has to be zero as well. So if we have some force here acting in the negative y direction, in order for the sum of the forces to be zero, we have to have a force acting in the positive y direction. And what we know, well, what kind of force is this? Well, let's think about what's happening. What force is pushing upwards on the box? What force is acting in the positive y direction? Well, it's the contact force between the 10 kilo box and the 5 kilo box. And that's going to be a normal force. Whenever two surfaces are touching, that's a normal force. So normal force, and we're going to say box 2 on box 1. And that's it. Those are the only forces that are acting on our five kilo box. So let's move over here and we're going to do our 10 kilo box, our box two. So again, we're going to draw our point like object. And of course, again, we know that there is a force of gravity, very straightforward. And we also know, we can kind of guess from the previous one, since it is also not accelerating downward, it is also at rest, that there is a normal force upwards. And we're going to say that that is a normal force from the table onto box two. 
but we're missing something. There's one more force that we haven't taken into account. It's a normal force, but it's acting in the opposite direction. Let's look. Wherever we have contact between surfaces, we have normal forces. So between the table and the 10 kilo box, there's a surface contact. That means there's a normal force. Between the 10 kilo box and the 5 kilo box, we saw that we had a normal force going upwards from the 10 kilo box onto the 5. Well, by definition, that also means that there has to be a normal force from the 5 kilo box onto the 10 kilo box. And you can imagine that's just the five kilo box, what feels like pushing down on the 10 kilo box, the weight of that box. And since it's in the downward direction, we're gonna have another arrow in the downward direction on our free body diagram. And we're gonna label that as another normal force, but this time it's very important that it's box one on box two. And if you notice, here's a, a good point to make is that in, in the diagram for box one, all of our forces are acting on box one, acting on box one. Gravity, Earth acting on box one, normal force, box two acting on box one. Similarly, for box two, everything is acting on box two. So when we're talking about a free body diagram, we care about what is happening to that box. So finally, let's look at this. There is something very important to notice about these two forces. They are both normal forces. One of them is the force of box two acting on box one. The other is the force of box one acting on box two. This is what we call an action-reaction pair. When one force acts on something, that something exerts a force on it. And that, in short, is what we call Newton's third law. For every force, there is an equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction, reaction force. And very simply put, we can say that F one on two equal to negative F two on one. And again, we're gonna put our vector symbol here. Say, so very straightforward. If something is pushing on you, you are pushing on that thing with an equal and opposite force. So, we need to define our system. When we're talking about forces, we need to talk about a system. So what we're going to talk about is a man holding a yo-yo. So here's our man. He's going to have an extra long arm. Here's our string. Here's our yo-yo. So what system are we talking about? So let's say a system is just a collect a group of objects that we care about looking at. Okay. So if we're going to say our system equals just the yo-yo, okay, let's draw a free body diagram for our system that's just the yo-yo. So for our free body diagram, we're going to take our point like mass. We know that there is a force of gravity, Earth, on the yo-yo. And we see that it's not moving, it's at rest, and we have a force acting upwards. Our string, yes, hooray for strings. That is a tension force acting upwards. Force of tension, string on yo-yo. And that's it. That is all she wrote. That is our for our system. That is our free body diagram. However, let's talk about a different system. Oop, go back. System. 
So let's say man and yo-yo. So with the man and the yo-yo, we are going to put them all together. So when we're looking at our system, we're going to look at everything that is going on in our man yo-yo system. Okay. So what does that mean when we're talking about our free body diagram? Well, what it means is, obviously, there is going to be a gravitational force, force of gravity, Earth. But on what? What exactly are we talking about? Well, when we're talking about our system, when we look at our free body diagram, the force is acting on that system. So the gravitational force that we're looking at is man plus yo-yo. All right. And now the only other force that we need to consider, since we're not moving, is the ground. And the ground is acting, there's a force normal of the ground on, and again, when we're talking on what? On the system, man plus yo-yo. And that's it. That's our system. It's not moving. There is a force downward, there is a force upward. All right, one more. System equals just the man. Okay, so now we're saying just the man. All we care about is just the guy. We gotta figure out what's happening to him. So let's draw our free body diagram. We know that there's a gravitational force, as always, but this time it's the Earth and, again, our system just acting on the man. There is also a normal force of the, what do we call it, um, ground. ground on the man, but we're missing something here. We said that when we were looking at just the yo-yo, just the yo-yo, there was a tension force from the string on the yo-yo in the upward direction. Now we know that the string connects, here's our string way down here, the string connects the man and the yo-yo. So by Newton's third law, if we are saying that F1 on 2 is equal to negative F2 on 1. Our tension force is acting up on the yo-yo. And since it's connected to the man, and we know that Newton's third tells us equal and opposite, we know that there is a tension force acting downward on the man with the same magnitude that it is holding the yo-yo up. Let's say force tension string on man. And so there are our three different systems. In each of our system, depending on what we include, the man, the man and the yo-yo, or just the yo-yo, our free body diagrams look very different. It's all about what we pay attention to. And this is a word you'll hear me say a lot object egoism and what that means is me 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 right now me 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 right now all i care about is what is happening to me at this very moment. I don't care what happened to me before. I don't care what's gonna to happen to me later. Become the yo-yo. If I am the yo-yo, I'm deaf, I'm blind, I can't tell what's going on. The only thing I can do is see forces, feel forces. All I know in this situation, way up here, when our system was just the yo-yo, if I am the yo-yo, all I can tell is that at this very instant, there's a tension force pulling me up, and there's a gravitational force pulling me down. That's all I know, that's object egoism.
last thing we're going to do, you know what, actually, we're not going to do the horse and cart problem. Uh, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to set it up for you, and then I want you to give it a shot. Uh, this is a this is a tough one. If you think you can get it right, by all means, come see me, uh, and we'll we'll talk or send me an email, and we can talk about a solution to this. I don't want to make this too long. So here is our cart, and we're going to draw the worst horse imaginable. Horse is attached to the cart. So if I am the horse. And I know Newton's third law. I know that for every force, there is an equal and opposite force. Okay. I'm thinking I am the horse. Me, me, me right now. I'm the horse. And I know if I pull on the cart with some force. So if I apply a force this way on the cart, I'm pulling the cart. I know that by definition, the cart is pulling back on me. So if I pull the cart. And the cart pulls back on me those are equal and opposite forces how can i move if however hard i pull the cart it pulls back on me with the same force in the opposite direction how can i move we know that the horse can move obviously because horses pull carts all the time but there's something that the horse is missing so what i'd like you to do is i'd like you to draw free body diagrams for the horse and the cart really think about it make sure that you get all of the forces happening remember object egoism me 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 right now draw some free body diagrams see if you can come up with what the horse is missing all right so that's it uh let's see if i can end this properly without breaking my computer